Welcome to Gumball Love. I'm Melissa Ledger, professional relationship coach, creator of Gumball Love, and the Back to You Academy. If you're ready to stop the cycle of toxic men, get through the breakup once and for all, and finally get back to you, you are in the right place. This journey is about healing your heart, and you are encouraged to take the pace that is just right for you. In the process, you will build a foundation of confidence and strength that will make you unshakable, I promise. So get ready to level up your mindset and your lifestyle as you awaken the seeds of greatness just waiting to burst into full bloom. Let's do this. Welcome back to another episode of Gumball Love. I'm your host, Melissa Ledger. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. I hope you had an amazing holiday season and celebration of the new year wherever you are in the world. I look at how many downloads in all the different countries around the world. It still blows my mind that so many of us are connected in this way. So welcome back. I hope you are feeling refreshed if you made your goals or you are uh, you know, using your new planner. I haven't even gotten a new planner. I feel so unlike me, but um, haven't haven't shopped for the new planner yet, but it's always fun to have a new notebook, a new planner. But I actually just moved into a new place last month. And so I'm still putting my office together and just getting uh, myself all situated. So the new planner will be coming. So today I want to talk to you about the why isn't he? Why isn't he doing the thing that you want him to do so you can just explore the relationship that you so badly want to explore? This is so frustrating when you feel completely attracted to him, you get the butterflies, you're starting to feel things that you don't typically feel. We all know online dating is so amplified right now because of all of the limitations we have on meeting each other physically and you're probably more carefully choosing who you want to meet up with and how you're how you're navigating this world where you know, meeting in person is now a little bit different. And so everybody's doing it differently. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. But I know that there are challenges out there and everyone's choosing to do this in a different way. So I can tell you that speaking from experience, I spent the last better part of 2020 separated from my significant other. We did this almost the whole first part of a relationship was almost all long distance. And so it does present challenges, but it is possible to fall in love, to find the person you're supposed to be with, even if it's long distance, even if periods of time you can't see each other. So there's that. And I also wanted to address too that the the why isn't he calling, texting, when you're trying to figure out all those what what is going on on his end, I wanted to just address those because those are probably the most, the majority of the questions I get in our private Facebook group, in my inbox, in my DMs, in my emails, the things we cover in private coaching sessions is a lot of times, okay, here's my situation, this is my guy, this is what he's doing. This is what he isn't doing. I'm confused. What's going on? And so we dig in. We dive into the specifics. So if, you know, I, I'm going to try to cover this in a very broad sense, but obviously if you have something more complex, then booking a private session is going to be the way for, we, for us to really dig in. But I wanted to just give you an episode that you could come back to over and over and over again anytime you feel like you're stuck in this situation where you're thinking, okay, what's going on here? Because you get to this point, because you did have some interaction that was positive, it was, you know, fun, it was flirty. And he's cute. He's saying all the right things, you're clicking. And then there's a pause. What's going on? So I just did a Google search just because I always like to see like, okay, here's what I would think. And what what do the articles say? So uh, the first thing that came up is a guy explains the top five reasons they aren't texting you back. Do you know what is number one on this list? Video games, (laughs) which the uh, I'm sleepy text. I'm a little preoccupied right now. So let's just stop and think about that for a second. Let's say 
It's just that it seems that he's not texting you back as quickly or as often as you would like. But everything else seems to be normal. It's just not at the tempo or the pace that you might be used to. So I want to just cover a few of these areas. Number one, you may have dated gumball guys exclusively. And gumball guys, when they're into you, they typically are extremely quick to respond and they're rapid fire texting you and it's really exciting. So a guy that does like you, but also is going to play his video game, could make you feel like you're sitting there waiting and he's not interested. And so then you'll stare at your phone and you'll overanalyze what's going on. And in that analysis, you will, what is it, uh, paralysis by analysis. So you feel that paralyzed feeling. You feel that panic set in like, oh my God, what's going on? And then our fear of abandonment kicks in. And then we're sitting there in what is just a normal texting conversation. And we're like, are you still there? What's going on? Did I lose you? We start saying things that indicate I'm not getting a response fast enough. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't feel like, hey, I deserve to be told I'm going to be right back or, you know, I'm, I'm busy right now, but can we chat later? These are things that I do want you to expect out of a man that respects your time. However, I also don't want us to be so critical and we don't want to be so hyper-focused on everything that they're doing all of the time because it might be too early to do that, if that makes sense. So I want to just, I have a few points here. One, don't give it too much too soon. Live your life without feeling like you're waiting on his every word. I want you to ask yourself, okay, how long have I known this guy? Have I known him a week? And am I sitting here terrified that the guy I've known for a week is not texting me back? And I want you to just, when in doubt, wait. Don't send something that tr- that tells him, hey, buddy, you're not doing the right thing here, and I'm not happy with you. I want you to allow yourself to watch the behavior and see, how does this guy respond if I say nothing about the way he's responding to me or the lack of response? If I just sit tight, what does he do? And there's a couple of things that happen. Let's say you're just like, okay, I guess I thought we were talking, we're having this conversation, and now there's a lull. What if he actually is playing a video game? Not that that makes it better, but also what if it's not really a conversation that's a back and forth banter? Maybe you're just sort of texting through the day. And so is he really supposed to respond right now? And so I want you to just pause and say, okay, what else can I do with my time and allow yourself to push through this moment. If you have to journal through it, if you have to listen to this podcast through it, I wanna give you the tools because you need to develop this muscle here where you say, okay, I don't really love this, but if I choose to address it, I'm gonna tell you straight up, if you choose to address it, you become a teacher or a mommy. And guess what is not sexy? Teachers or mommies. So the moment you try to say anything that tells him, look, you're not doing it the way I like it, naughty, naughty, does not make him feel like a man. So if you feel like you have to do that, that's the moment I want you to ask yourself, okay, I am starting to give him instructions. I am starting to try to make him do something that he's not already doing on his own. So why not just watch? So I want you to wait and watch. And number two, so number one is don't give too much too soon. Number two, relax and enjoy the process. So when we're enjoying our own lives and we are fulfilled, we have, you know, all the areas where you feel like you're doing well in your work, you're going to the gym, you have your home in order, you are spending time with your friends, your family, you have healthy relationships around you. These are things that are critical to having a healthy relationship. I cannot tell you how many times I have thought about that in my current relationship. Man, I'm glad I've established my own hobbies, my own habits, my own passions, and so that I have things to do and occupy my mind with. I'm not just sitting there waiting for my relationship to fulfill me in every single area. 
because it's it's an unrealistic expectation to have for each other. We cannot fulfill each other in every single way. It's impossible. So we have to have other things that we like to read about, learn about, spend our time doing. And so I want you to rely on those things during this time and say, okay, I do like this guy. I wish he was responding faster, but is that really the only thing that I want right now? And then I want you to challenge yourself. Am I waiting for a gumball here? Am I just waiting for compliments? Am I looking for flirtation? Or am I actually in this for the conversation? I know. I know it's hard because sometimes you do. You get excited and then you're like, oh, I am kind of waiting for a gumball. Am I really just into the discussion or the content? Or do I just want him to tell me I'm beautiful or that he's into me? And so I want you to just look at it, wait, watch, and also do something that you enjoy. Even if you just turn on an episode of Grey's Anatomy, that's my go-to and I'm just so I want to like escape or, uh, or I will write or I will make content, I'll do a podcast or whatever. It's the go-to that you need when for anything. It doesn't have to be waiting on a guy. It can be, you know, just 2020 sucked and you, sometimes you just need a break from everything. So what what are those things that you can do with your time that allow you to let go of the hyper focus on this particular situation. So, and also just just picture him playing a video game. Like what if that really is all he's doing? And and just when if you picture something like that, like let's say he's playing a video game or he's watching a movie and that's really all he's doing and you're on the other side, you have no idea and you're like, I can't even believe it. Like, what is he, get, what, you know, is he talking to somebody else? Like we, we think of a million things, right? He's talking to somebody else. He's not really that interested. He got bored. He thought it was stupid. Like we start overanalyzing. And this brings me to my third point, which is the right person will love everything about you. And I know that seems crazy because it was one of the things that was hardest for me to believe even when we were together. It was just like, wow, is this person really into me? Like I think they are. And it just doesn't didn't seem real. Still doesn't seem real sometimes. And but it is. And it will be real for you. You have to believe that that there is someone out there. He is walking around, talking, having, you know, meals and watching something on Netflix maybe or whatever. He's going to the gym. Like your dude is walking around and you are made for him. And so when these situations come up where you're, I don't know what's going on. It's like, don't force it. Don't try so hard because you won't have to try that hard for somebody that's right for you. But I will tell you, I don't know that if I I would be with my significant other now if I had if I had told him and walk and and made him go through every time I felt anxiety or doubt and I needed reassurance. If I had gone to him every single time I had that, that would have been an exhausting relationship. And I wouldn't be really being myself. When we're insecure like that, we're not being ourselves. We are being some some other version we're being inauthentic because you as your authentic you you as the most authentic version of yourself you it's not an insecure needy oh my god is this enough like that's not who you really are that's you trying to lean on somebody else to give you it's it's searching for the evidence of your own self-worth it's looking for that person to give you the evidence yes i'm worthy yes i'm worthy yes i'm worthy which you can see where we also become the gumball girl in this process because when we're dating guys that are always making us doubt ourselves, then we do look to them for the evidence of our worth and it starts a vicious cycle. So a healthy guy won't be overdoing it with the gumballs. He won't be giving you lots of compliments. He actually will talk about things that have nothing to do with exciting romance, sex or anything. He'll just be actually getting to know you or talking about politics, religion, the events of the day, whatever your interests are, like that's where you're, he's actually going to be interested in what you think and why you think it and all of those things. And so sometimes we have to stop and realize, yeah, I know this isn't, this isn't intense, but it is building intimacy. It is building friendship. It is building the bond. And that's what, that's what's going to be the difference. And so it's not going to be intense rapid fire texting. So sometimes it's like, why isn't he texting? Well, did he text you today? 
and maybe he didn't text you a lot today, but if it's in the beginning, he could be going through things that you just don't know about yet. And I'm, and this could be that he's just not going to tell you about it yet, or it could be something that prevents the relationship from moving forward. And and what I mean by that is some of these guys entertain a relationship, a relationship for a while, but there's really something going on that he feels like, mm, if you find out about this, you're not going to be into him anymore. And sometimes he's addressing that. It could be a drinking problem. It could be a drug problem. It could be a, he lives with his parents and he lied about it. It could be that he is breaking up and making up with his ex-girlfriend. And so he's going through that process, yet there is an interest and an attraction to you, but that is the thing he's hiding. And so sometimes it is someone else, but it doesn't mean, oh, well, if there's someone else, then I'm not enough. It means, oh, you have unresolved stuff. So I'm not going to sit around and wait for that. However, what so many of us do is we start participating in the unresolved stuff. We start, we find out about it. Oh, there's another girl. Okay, well, what's going on with that? And then he tells you the details. And then now you're involved where he's sometimes, I've had a client where they're they're actually living with her, but I'm not sleeping with her. And we're in the process and, and, and I really liked you. And so now, now I want to be with you. And now you're caught up in this drama. And so if you go back to the flavors of the gumball, now it's, I'm competing with somebody else. Now there's drama. And now I'm his counselor. You become his teacher. So then you're not the priority. And that's when you're like, okay, now I can make the decision of, look, this is too many things you have going on. And I do really like you, but unfortunately, I can't move forward. And we have to be able to make those decisions in these situations, even though it hurts. But we cannot become involved in the reason that he isn't calling, that he isn't texting. Because if the reason is something that prevents him from being focused on the relationship, if it's somebody else, if it's a an addiction problem that he has lost control over, we cannot be a drug counselor, an alcohol counselor. We cannot be a, uh, a therapist for him. You cannot be the teacher or the advisor. You cannot be the teacher or the advisor. You cannot help him through his life and manage all of these things. He needs to be able to come to the relationship emotionally and, and physically and be and mentally be there for you and not have you coaching him along and as my other therapist used to say, propping him up. We cannot be, we cannot need to prop the guy up so we can have a relationship with them. You need to be able to lean on each other. And so if there's somebody else in the picture, it has to be a walk away moment. It's not a, I'm going to really dive in and try to understand and see if I can find a way to become a part of this guy's life while he's allowing other things. So so what I'm saying is sometimes in the beginning, when you, you're like, why isn't he calling? Why isn't he texting? Because he's tending to those other things. So then I want you to, again, watch, wait. And I don't mean wait as in I'm going to just stop what I'm doing. You can go, oh, okay. So now he's not texting back. Don't pursue it. Just wait. Wait to see how long it goes that he doesn't text. Then look at what he does text and go, hmm, do I like that? Is that is that okay for me? And then you don't have to, even then, allow yourself to just collect the data. Okay, let's see what he does now. I just want to see what this guy does. If I don't say anything, if I don't let him on to the fact that I can see he's being kind of flaky, let him continue to be flaky so that you can watch behavior repeat itself. And then you can say, yeah, okay, I see who this guy is. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying like, oh, yeah, it's super, super cool to just walk away when you had some feelings and you were attracted. And then because they always come back and then they're always interested when you're not or you're on your way out. That's when they really start putting on the heat. And then you're like, well, you know, so many of my clients, I'm not doing anything tonight. You know, I was just bored. So I thought, what the hell? No, 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 no. We, we do not say, well, I know my worth. 
but I'm bored tonight. So I'm going to lower my worth just because I'm going to set, because then you're just, you're using him as a gumball. You need to figure out other ways to fill up the boredom and not pretend that you're just going to entertain yourself with some guy that you're wildly attracted to, or even if you're not wildly. Some of us were like, oh, you know, he came over, I knew I would get sex, and then it's like, don't pretend like you don't care what's going to happen. Don't pretend like if he doesn't call you after that interaction that you're not going to be hurt by it. It sucks. So he's the same flaky guy and now he's Mr. Available because he's in the mood or he's horny or whatever. And so I want you to just allow yourself, okay, why isn't he calling? Why isn't he texting? Why is there a lull? Is it that I'm overreacting and I just need to give it time and then give it time and then look at it differently? Like, okay, now that I've given it time, what actually happened? So also another point, he might still be in the discovery phase about you. Like, I like this girl. But remember, gumball guys pretend like they know everything about you in the first few dates. Oh my gosh, you're so amazing. I think you're incredible. You're the best thing since sliced bread. They don't even know you. And they're saying all these things. Normal guys actually don't feel like they know you because they don't. (laughs) And so they take their time and they ask questions And they may let a whole day go by where they don't text because they're actually doing other things. And it, and it could be, it could be video games. It could be work. It could be just spending time with family. What if, what if he has children or a child and he's spending time with them? They're not going to become all consumed with talking to you. And I know it sucks because gumball guys do, and that feels good in the beginning, but regular dudes don't do that. And so there is a transition from gumball guy into healthy guy. And I'm not saying healthy guy is, you know, he's not like, I've gone through all the therapy and I'm Mr. Perfect. It's it's not like that either. It's just that he isn't coming. I've said this before. He's not coming to the table starving. The gumball guy is starving to that. He hasn't eaten where the, the healthier guy has already had a full meal. And so he's not oh my God, I've got to text her back. Oh my God, I'm not going to rapid fire, rapid fire. Not to say that he won't get excited. He he is human. He is going to have those endorphins. He's excited. He likes you. He likes talking to you. He's attracted to you. But it's not going to be in a manic sort of way. So I want you to just be able to separate that difference. Okay, so remember, he, he's just discovering you. So allow yourself to be discovered. Relax enjoy, enjoy your own life, and just wait and watch. Because what will happen is that every time you think when you're really with a good guy, or you're with the guy, and you want to freak out because you think, oh, God, something might be happening. Do you know how many times I did this with my current significant other? And there was never anything wrong ever, which is embarrassing, but there wasn't. And I would, I would create all kinds of stuff in my head. But I let them all pass. And if I really got myself into an anxiety, you know, freak zone, I would have an appointment with my therapist, which we did these virtually. He would give me these smirky smiles like, oh, Melissa, like, I know, I know it sounds weird, but this is where I am. So let's walk through it. And we would. And then I would just, I would see the evidence over time that my anxiety was not, was also (laughs) your anxiety is not your intuition. But man, sometimes we're like, what does your gut tell you? My gut tells me I'm freaking out. Really? Is that your gut or is that your anxiety? And look, sometimes we don't know. And so wait, don't run over to him every time. Well, I just felt like, you know, you needed to text me back. I I get so many of so many messages. And when I'm coaching, I hear this. I went to him and I kind of chewed his ass for it. Like, well, did he deserve to have his ass chewed for what? I really want you to ask yourself. Okay, I should have bullet pointed this ahead of time, but I'll just try to do this off the cuff. I want you to ask yourself a few questions before you jump to the conclusion that he's not into you. I want you to just say, okay, how long have we been talking? What am I, what conclusion am I making in this moment? How long have we been talking? How well do we know each other? What conclusion? And what evidence do I have to base that conclusion. <laughs> this is the question that would always stump me. I'd be like, 
do I have evidence to support my theory right now? No, I do not. Not even what every time it was like not even a shred. But it was amazing what I could come up with, you know, pretty, pretty wild imagination we have sometimes. It's like, and then, oh my God, like so many, so many times it would be proven to me where there was no evidence and then it would just be overwhelmingly not true. And then I would just sit there like, oh my God, I'm such a freak show. You know, I would think, thank God I didn't say anything. And I just rode that storm out and you know, I looked like I had my feet up and I was just kind of riding the waves. But in reality, my mind and I was just, you know, frantic, but I was able, it's like a, like a duck swimming on the water. They look so smooth, but their feet are just flapping out of there like crazy. You know, it's kind of whatever you got to do, right? But what I'm trying to teach you to do is be able to, to trust yourself. This is how I did a podcast a while back of trusting your own instincts. I should go back and listen to it. I try not to listen to my own podcast because, you know, I'm too critical of them. But but we did about trusting your instincts and how when you've had these bad experiences with gumball guys and they've happened over and over again, you do doubt your instincts. So you don't feel like, man, can I even trust what I think I should do? Because I haven't been able to for so long I've been wrong in so many cases where I thought it was a good guy and it wasn't. So how do I trust that now? And this is what you do. You you wait so that you also don't, um, I haven't then that first point, don't give too much too soon. And what I mean by that is don't give him so much emotion too soon. Don't give it so much energy and so much intensity before it's necessary. Because, it, and, and don't don't put too much emphasis on, oh my God, what does this mean? Does he deserve or has he earned that part of you early in that relationship? And I mean, even in the first two, three, four months. And I also want to say that there were moments that I did freak out with my significant other. I did kind of lose it. I would jump to conclusions and 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 I would be like, I feel like this is happening. And then, you know, he was able to weather a, a couple storms with me and he was wonderful through it. And that also showed me that, you know what, if I do completely lose it and I freak out or I get worried, that that's okay too. It's not like you have to remain this perfectly emotionless girl that just, you know, doesn't have any feelings and can just write out anything and she doesn't get a, no, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is I want you to strengthen that muscle so you can then have more self-control and not reveal so much before you really need to. And it's not about playing games because Playing a game would be to manipulate the situation, but more so, okay, if he hasn't texted, he hasn't called, do I, what, what can I do to allow myself to work through this without going to him? Because I don't really know if this is a problem. Do I have any evidence this is a problem? The evidence would be, I'm talking to somebody else. The evidence is somebody saw him on a date with another girl. The evidence is he's lying to you. Something like that, where then, okay, now you're starting to have evidence. But if you really don't, and you're just annoyed at a lack of response or delay, or I don't feel like he's asking me out fast enough, but there is consistency, there is interest, there are questions being asked. So that then you then you ask this, is he asking questions? Is he consistently reaching out to me? Is there interest outside of sex? Am I, are we actually having conversations about meaningful topics? And then there's just one other area that is bugging you. I want you to give yourself time to work through it before you address it with him. Because a lot of times you'll go, oh my God, I went through that and I totally would have said something previously, but I did... I realized the conclusion I was jumping to was false. And now the next time that happens, you already have more strength. Okay, I did freak out about this before. I'm tempted to jump to this conclusion, but I've done this and I've gotten through it and I will do. I will be able to do this again. And over time, you start to realize, oh, all these things that I think I need to be worried about are really not that big of a deal. And it allows your relationship to progress 
without bringing up all these little mini drama situations. Because the gumball guy will embrace that drama and he'll he'll have his moody response and then you're in these stupid little fights and then you're making up from fights that are really petty and you don't want that kind of relationship. You're listening to this podcast because you don't want that kind of relationship. You want that mature relationship. You want that nice guy, the consistent guy is just going to be there for you and you can have just a healthy relationship, but you have to pra- put that into practice. It's not going to just jump into your lap and you're not going to be able to lecture a guy that really respects himself, you're not going to be able to lecture him or teach him or scold him. So the second you start doing that, you do not have you do not have a healthy relationship. So if you're going to tell him something and you're really going to tell him how it's going to be and no, that's not you're not equals. So you have to look at it that way too. Okay, I I don't like the way he's doing XYZ, but he is my equal. And if you want, you want him to be a man and you want him to show up in all the ways that you've ever wanted a relationship, then you have to hold off on jumping to those conclusions and being overly emotional. Be overly emotional. I don't really care, like have all the emotion, but it doesn't need to be always with him because having all that emotion, sometimes it's our own stuff most of the time. It's our own stuff, okay? And so sometimes we have, to, when we're working through that, we can work through it on our own. We work through it with our friends, our therapists. And then you're like, okay, I didn't take my significant other or my future significant other through that roller coaster because it was unnecessary. So let's go, I just want to go back to that article really quick on why he also may not be texting back. The bro code. So the bro code might be dumb, but it's basically the it says the oldest rule in history dating back to when Sir Henry Dudington the 4th traveled overseas with his bros to get super sloshed and find some new suitors for the evening. Okay, that obviously didn't happen. However, the bro code is in fact real and it does sometimes affect our ability to text you. Our buddy has a crush on you and it's in our in our best interest not to continue texting you in case that ruins his chances. So it could be, yeah, he knows somebody else is interested in you. It could be that he's playing hardball and he's playing games. And so remember, it's a whole other podcast about games, which I can actually do next. I might even do that podcast next. But games interrupt intimacy. When we're playing games, we're trying to manipulate the situation. We're trying to change or get somebody to act in a way that we want them to act. So now when we play a game, we're 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 not being authentically ourselves. And when you're not being authentic, you're not building connection. We're not building connection. You're not building intimacy. Therefore, what are you doing? You're just exchanging highs. You're exchanging gumballs. So when he's doing that, you have to ask yourself, okay, this guy's playing games. If I, if I collect enough evidence and I see the games and I, and I can, and I am able to, as my therapist, Dr. Stormbra said, when you see bad behavior that it becomes predictable, that's when you know, okay, this is not somebody that I can count on. Number four, this uh, article, it is in the Huffington Post, originally posted on Unwritten, and it's by Craig Ellis. I just want to give Craig Ellis the credit on Huffington Post. You're an ego boost and not much else. So then you're the gumball, right? So just you texting him might be giving him an ego boost, but he's not going to pursue the relationship past you know, when he reaches out, then you respond and then you get nothing. And he gives you things like uh, this quote says, Oh, sorry, my phone must have been on silent. So those kinds of things. It's just like it it sucks, right? And the next one is you're the side chick. So if you're the side chick, then he's only gonna respond to you when it's convenient. So when you start to see these things, you don't want to say, Oh, I must be the side chick. Just allow your allow this is when you respect yourself enough to not even address what he's saying or doing, you just fade off. And who cares what it looks like to him because you're going to, you're not going to talk to him anyway, but it's more important to how it feels to you. When you fade off, you don't give into it. And then when he texts you again, you don't respond and you feel that your power starts to build. This is that muscle I want you to build. So now, yeah, you're cute, but you play games. I'm turned off. I don't respond to that. 
You have to build that muscle because as soon as we, oh, he's texting again, even though we saw the bad behavior repeating over and over again, we can't give into it. You have to be like, okay, I don't want to be, I don't want to be someone's gumball. I'm not going to be someone's side chick because the side chick, it just never pans out, right? It's just never going to be where you want to be in the future. So I hope this is helpful to give you that strength and that uh, muscle memory, for lack of a better term, to, to build that in you so that you stop overanalyzing these random situations and that you're able to take a step back and say, okay, what am I really doing here? What am I looking for? Am I looking for the evidence of my own self-worth? If this guy doesn't text me back, does that mean I am not worthy? I can tell you many guys did not text me back. I had many moments where I sat there and I felt defeated. I felt like I wasn't enough. And now I realize they weren't the right person for me. They weren't even close. And I will tell you, I'm going to get my significant other on the podcast very soon. And just, I realize how much I really needed in the right relationship. And I still can't believe it's all in one person but I st- I'm starting to understand what people talk about at their weddings and what, like, I've listened to different people describe their significant others. And I would, you know, it was just stuff I kind of forgot about that I now feel and think about. And I go, oh, I get it now. And, you know, I sort of get the fairy tales a little bit that they're, they're not completely inaccurate. Not that they're, you know, not that the, the fantasy love is always there, but that there is something you can look forward to. But I can tell you as someone who sat there and overanalyzed and beat myself up over and over and over again, because some dude that sometimes I hadn't even met him, or I met him once. And then I would sit there and wonder like, what happened? Or what's going on? There's a million different things that can be going on with people. You just don't know what's behind the scenes. And I can tell you as I've coached so many girls, and you know, they'd meet me through the first time and we I hear the story. I'm like, you know what, there's something you don't know. And there's a reason. Nine times out of 10, we find out the reason and it's like, oh, that's why. I mean, and it's usually he doesn't have enough money. He is, there's somebody else. Uh, he didn't feel like enough. He was too insecure. There's so many different reasons, but it, it's it's never you're too fat, you're too ugly, you're not enough. Those are not the reasons. In another article I looked up, it said, unfortunately, it's usually him, not you. And not that it sounds cliche, but a lot of people are out there with profiles and they have all these intentions, but they're just not ready to be there. And then the moment somebody's interested, the moment someone's actually ready to meet them, they freak out. And then they're like, I can't do this. And then they chicken out. And it's guys that you're like, I never would imagine he would do that. It's like, I know, but he does because you don't know how deep that insecurity goes. You don't know how deep those issues are. You don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. So we cannot continue to doubt ourselves and go over and over and over text conversations that really have nothing to do with the reason that he's not texting, that he's not calling, that he's not asking you out. There, there are so many different reasons. So I want you to watch, wait, and then also go on with your life. Do the things that you love to do. Find the things that you love to do. Distract yourself, write, uh, you know, paint, go to a dance class, whatever you can do and wherever, whatever part of the world you're in, even if it's just watching dance, if you can only do things virtually, there's so many things that are going on virtually, but I want you to continue to pursue the things that you're interested in. Even if you have to start at the very beginning and think of things at a basic level or Google what are my interests? How do I find things I'm interested in? What do I what do I even do to start that process? Go on Pinterest. There's a thousand things you can do if you have access to the internet. So I want you to challenge yourself to know the the guy cannot be the end all be all. If you put that much pressure on your relationship, it will not last. So this part that you do before you meet your guy is is more important than meeting the guy. Because if you don't do that stuff beforehand, you don't really have a lot. You need to stand on your own. You cannot lean fully on him. Just you'll be mis- you will be miserable in the relationship and so will he. So you, you can't do that to each other. So I want you to just keep that in mind. Okay, this guy isn't texting back. He's not. Whatever the reason is, the guy for me is going to respond. The guy for me is going to engage. The guy for me is going to be there. However, it's not going to be intense and all perfect all in the beginning. 
the guy for you might need a little time to discover. And he may need a day that he doesn't text. And I want you to be able to relax enough to just get through it. I know it's hard, but then wait. And then you'll be like, oh, there he is. He's texting. He is consistent. And sometimes you'll just realize, oh, this is just how he is. Give him time to show you who he is too. Allow yourself to discover. Discover yourself, discover each other. And then if it's like, okay, you know what? This is not enough contact for me. Then you can make those decisions as they come. So obviously for every situation, it can be different. And so if you want to book a one-on-one coaching session, you can gumballlove.com, go into uh, coaching or one-on-one sessions. You can book them directly with me. I'm in the writing process right now. So all I'm doing, I don't have a mastermind or academy running right now. I just have uh, my one-on-one coaching as I'm in the writing process. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to meet with you. We meet on Zoom. You can do on video or just audio only, whatever you're more comfortable with. Or if you prefer to have me on video and just you on audio, I'm cool with whatever. Sometimes sometimes you just need to say your situation and not feel like you have to be on camera. So I, I completely, I don't, I don't care what you do. And if you, you don't want either one of us on camera, then I don't have to do my hair and makeup. <laughs> so I'm good with whatever you want to do. But I want you to... I want you to be able to relax and enjoy yourself and enjoy the process and not be so full of anxiety because I know so many of us, I struggle with anxiety, but I'm getting better, getting better at working through these things and realizing that a lot of times what you're afraid of, every time I was afraid, I didn't need to be afraid. And I was afraid so many times, but you know what? I don't even care because I was conditioned to be afraid and I didn't beat myself up. I would say, okay, this might be crazy to some people, but this is how I am. And even after all this work, just because you've done all the work, when you fall in love and you feel vulnerable, it's like, well, hello, unresolved anxieties. It's just, it's going to come up. But you know what? I powered through it and I muscled through it. And now I don't have those same things plaguing me anymore. And God forbid, if I ever had to go into another relationship, which I won't, but if I did, it would be different again because that muscle is there. And so I want you to just trust that you can do this. There is someone out there for you. This is not, if you're in a horrible situation, this is not the the way the future is going to be for you, but you, I need you to have that faith. I need you to have that positivity. I need you to have that belief in yourself, the belief in love, because, you know, no one wants to fall in love with somebody who doesn't really believe it. You know what I mean? We have to have that enthusiasm and be excited about it because if we don't, if we're not, then then we're just kind of like, you I mean, do you want to fall in love with a grumpy person? Do you want to fall in love with a skeptical person? It's hard to fall in love with people like that because those are the walls they have up. Well, they have a lot of walls up. It's like, okay, well, that's that's no fun. That's not up to you to pull those walls down. In one, another article, it's like people will be the the happy uh, half empty person, or I'm really depressed, or you know all these excuses that people have because they're trying to hope that the other person will shepherd them through the process, and that they're just they're going to be excited and and optimistic enough for the both of you. That's not fair. So we have to do what has we have to do what we have to do to get to the point where we feel happy in our own lives. And if you followed me, do you remember if you go back through my Instagram, look at when I was ballroom dancing. I was like, I live in New York City. I'm ballroom dancing. I love my apartment. I have my dogs. I'm, I love my life. And I was freaking happy single. I got really good at being single. So happy. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want anyone to come in and mess this up. So, but I was like, but what about the person that doesn't mess it up? What about the person that adds to it? What about the person that adds dimension? That could be really exciting. What would that person look like? Then I started feeling worthy of that person. And I went through that process of getting there and staying enthusiastic and staying optimistic and having that, I don't know when it will happen, but I know it will. And I know uh, my friend Kara from the Champagne Diet, she kept reminding me over and over again, what is for you will not pass you. What is for you will not pass you. So I even leave it on on this podcast by Henry David Thoreau. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life you have imagined. Live the life you have imagined. 
I have imagined so many pieces of this life that I have now have because I started to just think that way and expect that way and also work my way toward it. And so all of those times that I worked through those anxiety moments, that's, yes, you can have a positive mindset, but it's also understanding that you're still human, you still have a past, you still have anxiety, you still have PTSD from past relationships. And it is, you have to accept that part of yourself and not be like, oh, what is wrong with me? Why do I keep making, it's like, you're going to meet, you could meet a few more guys that are the wrong guy. You could meet a few more gumball guys. So what? Who cares? You know, if someone's like, oh my God, you met another guy. Yeah, this is the process. This is how it goes. This is what we do. And we move on, but we don't need to beat ourselves up every time we make a mistake. I don't know why we do this in relationships. I don't know why we think this is supposed to be some effortless process. It's not. But it also doesn't have to be a massive labor either. I think we just take it a little bit too seriously and we get so devastated by those temporary disappointments and we give them way too much weight. So just remember the right, it will be simple when it's right. It will not be in rapid fire speed though. So I want you to allow, as my mom used to say, let it evolve. Let things evolve. Let things happen in their natural timing. Don't try to force something to, oh, I want this to happen faster. I want this to happen right now. Now just relax for a little bit. You're like, okay, maybe I want this right now, but is that what he feels like? Maybe I need to chill a little bit. And then start looking at yourself, looking at him. And then, then you start giving each other space to be each other instead of trying to put it in some kind of order and controlling the process. Because when we're trying to control it, we're worried we're going to lose it. And that's where anxiety is driving versus intuition and versus just letting love flow where it goes. And you're not going to control it anyway. You think you're going to control falling in love? You're not. You will not. I said that to a couple of clients, one in particular. She's like, well, when I find a guy, I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to do that. And I just smiled and I go, I think it's hilarious. You think you can control it? You can't control it. Really? You think you can, those people that think they're going to take it slow, you're going to take the, your foot off the gas and then increase the speed and then hit the brake. If you can do that, you're a weirdo. You are. I'm sorry, but you cannot control your heart like that. It's just going to fall in love and you'll be like, oh my God, I am just madly in love with this person. And if they leave me, I will be wrecked. And you know what? That's the risk you take. And you just have to embrace it. There is no way to prevent this from happening. And when it happens, it happens and you just, you're in love. And so you got to just let the process flow. And by all means, this platform is to help you so that you don't allow yourself to fall in love in, in in spite of all of the the dysfunction or red flags like yes sometimes we can fall in love and it it is out of our control as far as how we feel but if we can bring the awareness up of the other things that are going to make it not sustainable that's where we are able to navigate and get ourselves out of situations and even though there could be healing that's involved it's still going to hurt your heart you're able, you're much able to get through it in a healthier way. And each time we do this, it gets healthier and healthier. And then eventually you end up with the right person. But when you're single in the process, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful phase. So don't underestimate what you're doing when you're single. It is critical to building the foundation of your future relationship. All right, I'm going to end there. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this helps the why isn't he doing this? When is he doing this? What's going to happen? All the overanalyzing. So feel free to email me, melissa at gumballlove.com. All right, until next time, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for listening. If you want more information or to schedule a private coaching session, or better yet, to join the next Back to You Academy, go to gumballlove.com. If you loved this podcast, I would love for you to share it with your friends. And if you really loved it, a five-star review is the best compliment you can give. Remember, you are enough, you are right where you should be, and the only thing you have to do is keep going. I'll leave you with my favorite quote by Henry David Thoreau. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life you have imagined. Until next time, 
I'll see you soon.